Yeah, it's a common thing for many of us to get lost at times or a lot of the time in our thoughts, emotions, sensations and other experiences. And we need to be open enough and honest enough to see that that's something that ruled our life, basically. How the game is like that, the rules of the game. I am um, an incomplete person. There's something wrong about me, sin, karma, uh, ego, something that I need to fix and change. And the game is to gain as much or as many positive thoughts, emotions and experiences and get rid of the negative ones. So it's a bit like, remember this 80 games Pac-Man? Eating all the negative uh, creatures along the way and trying to go through a maze, but it seems like endless and then you have another level and another level and you need to be refined in the way that you deal with your thoughts and emotions can be fun, can be interesting, but woo, <laughs> there's much more to that. And I know and I'm sharing for my direct experience that I've been doing it for ages before coming across the Balance View training. I trained my mind to be confused. I trained my mind to be uh, lost in descriptions and of course as a um, refined human being with great ideas, my descriptions were refined as well, most of the time. But did it really lead me to where I wanted to go? Because when we think about something like stress or feeling guilty or anxiety around something, whether it's public speaking or job situation, relationship, usually the tools that we are using are very, very primitive. The tools are very limited to one description against another description. And I'll, I'll give a practical <coughs> example. So you are sad at 2 a.m. and you're crying in the bathroom. For example, not sure where it came from. So you sit there and you cry and you know your life is a misery and then the Bollywood story starts, right? It was always like that and what can I do with that? And there's an indulgence going on there where we go into the story, try to find reasons, justifications and basically wanting to find relief after exhausting ourselves in like ages of talking about the story and trying to understand it in all kinds of filters and tools. <coughs> I've done that for ages, loads of years of just thinking about my thoughts, emotions and sensations, data streams and trying to feel, why do I feel like that? Why do I wake up with a certain feeling and then afterward it's changed and I read so many things that pointed to so many things but the ultimate conclusion was that I'm a bit of a crazy or unstable or I don't know what to call it and sometimes I felt great with my thoughts and emotions, but there was a constant uh, up and down going on there. And then another way is to avoid the situation, try not to feel sad, because strong people, they shouldn't cry at 2 a.m. in the uh, bathroom. And, uh, and you do everything you can in order to not feel it, not to think it, something that will trigger this sadness. And a third po p uh, approach is to replace it. <coughs> So I'm feeling sad or let's say I'm feeling anxious before speaking here in front of all of you. So to replace it will be, I have all these anxious data streams like the heartbeat and the sweat. I don't have it actually now, but let's say <laughs> I, I had it many times before. So the, the idea is then, oh, I shouldn't feel it because then I will not be able to say what I need to say and be stable enough and everyone will laugh at me and I'll be such a loser and there's a camera in front of me, oh, it, it's a disaster, I, I better run away, which is avoid. And replace will be to say, no, I'm a great speaker. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm strong and beautiful and I, my English is quite okay. So, oh yes, yes, and I've been doing it for years. So, and I studied acting, yeah, yeah. You see, I'm already changing one description with another in order to provide benefit. And these are limited ways of using our mind. It's so frustrating. Why it's so frustrating? Because it can work for a moment, but then we need to ser search again for the next antidote, for the next positive data, for the next positive affirmation, the great high experience, and see that life becomes such a maze of trying to seek and look for stability and openness and success and warmth and love but we look in all the wrong places and that's what I've done for ages. I looked in my descriptions, which are always changing. Look at your own experience. Again, be honest enough. Did you have one specific thought in the last five minutes or was it all over the place? 
changing, positive, negative, neutral. What am I doing here? I like it, I don't like, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, the person next to me does look great, you know, or things like that, whatever arise. This is the dynamic potency of our mind. We simply trained ourselves to mistreat it, you can say, not to recognize its essence as pure and beneficial. Everything about us is completely pure and beneficial, including the things that we don't like. I had <coughs> lists of things I wanted to change in order to be this perfect person that I always wanted to be. And it included millions of years of effort in order to maybe reach that in all kinds of ways. I need to do one da 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 and I need not to think this and that and I need every, my conduct needs to be a specific way. Th it was such a heavy load to carry and it's frustrating because it doesn't lead anywhere. The attempt to rearrange our thoughts and emotions to a better display, it's like trying to rearrange space. I will be very s complex here trying to rearrange this part of space and hold on to this part of space, which I assume is positive, but nothing happens. I simply get tired, I get old really quickly, I don't have energy and I'm not available. That's what's happening constantly in our own mind. And we are basically choosing without any fault, you know, that's what most of us learn to be a victim of our ever-changing display, to be a victim of our data streams. See, see it in your own experience. How many hours a day you think about your life, your data streams? How, how many days in your life, how many months and years you've been trying to be something that you're not? And you looked in place as you listened to advice of people who told you how you need to behave in order to feel happy. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of our time and energy. Basically, it's our full-time job, and then we still need to manage to live life. So there's a lot going on there. What about a simple solution that cuts the game, stops the game completely, and allows us to recognize our innate beneficial nature? That's what I always wanted. I wanted to know how to be stable, relaxed, and beneficial, because I knew that I have something to contribute in this world, and I knew that everyone does. It's simply a matter of how we use our mind. Everyone is brilliant. Everyone is perfect. We simply trained ourselves to think that we are victims of, of an unpredictable display. Again, look at your own mind. What's going on there? Yeah. And when we try to rearrange it, immediately there's tension. So through effort, I try to relax. That's ridiculous, right? When we speak about it like that. Through efforting to relax, I became more tensed. And of course, once in a while, I had this, ah, I'm so brilliant, and oh, everyone's beautiful. Wow, I'm so open, and I'm so, my spine is erect, and wow, I love everyone. <laughs> but then a moment afterwards, this unpredictable data stream jumped and said, look at your life. <laughs> What are you doing, for God's sake? Like, grow up and get a job, or something like that, or whatever comes up. Get a girlfriend, get two girlfriends, four girlfriends, or boyfriends, and, <laughs> you know, be the person you need to be, and so on. And then, oop, the state is gone, and the sense of being a failure. And that can be applied to conventional means, like getting the job, getting the family, getting the this and that, which all includes, <coughs> inclusive, I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm happily married, our marriage is dedicated to the benefit of all, and I'm having the best time ever. But the context is very different. I'm not using my wife to provide me positive data streams. I've tried in the past, it led to frustration. She was the one who needed to fix my data streams about myself, and when we had an issue in the relationship, we needed to talk. <laughs> 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 Why? Do you say that? Why do you leave this in the count? That? Why do you do this? Why? Oh, da, da. And then reaching a conclusion until the next time. So random. So completely random and unpredictable. <laughs> and then to see that there's a simple solution to go straight to the essence rather than get confused in the descriptions about how can I relax if I'll do this, that, the other thing, only in Goa, only on Saturdays or Sundays, only when I'm with these people or that people. What about right now, completely relax for a short moment? If you can't stop thinking in order to recognize open intelligence, continue to show up. 
there's nothing wrong about you and you're, you're not the first one who finds it difficult. But it doesn't mean that your mind is less beneficial than another person's or it's less perfect. You have a very dynamic mind. Hello, welcome to the club of very dynamic minds. Very dynamic minds, very afflictive minds are minds of great benefit if we choose to recognize the essence of open intelligence. The basis, the stable basis that really provides the stability and the ease that allows us to be completely open and relaxed in all situations, including very challenging situations. So relaxation doesn't depend on not having work or just being on the beach or being just with people who agree with your political views or dietary views or whatever is important to you. It can be applied and enjoyed in every moment. Just now, for example. Take a short moment and recognize what's looking, what's in the basis. I've always been there, always stable, always available. It's not outside of ourselves, it's not somewhere inside of ourselves. We don't need to look for it, it's already, already present. And that's what we do when we stop thinking, it's a direct introduction to the nature of mind. What remains when we stop thinking? Alert, clear, cognizant, <coughs> power, the power to know. This is open intelligence. When we repeat those short moments many times, what becomes is that we start to relax and rest naturally in situations but that before we applied the tools of uh, emphasizing our data streams. So when we do that, we get to enjoy the benefits that allow us to actually make decision th decisions and be in the world, use our speech, our body, mind, qualities and activities in a way that is of benefit to all. Because we are no longer, or no longer looking for stability and happiness in descriptions, then we can really contribute to situations in an incredible way, bring insight. When guilt arises, for example, in the past I would do everything not to feel guilt and usually I would justify myself, you know, <laughs> yeah, sure, I'm right, as always. So the other person just needs to grow up and deal with it. But is that really what we are doing in short moments? No, we allow the guilt to be as it is and then from there, if an action is needed, like an apology, say, I need to make a change here, we are clear enough and confident enough to come to the person and offer a solution. Make our word count rather than be random and vague in life. So this is something that definitely comes about with taking uh, responsibility <coughs> for the recognition of open intelligence. Is open intelligence still there? Check in your own experience. Did it disappear due to a, a data? Data streams and open intelligence are inseparable, like the color blue in the sky, not two things, like fire and heat, simply the dynamic energy. And see how each data stream, each thought, emotions, and sensation self-releases, like a line drawn in water leaving no trace. So what I thought in the past would be like my traumas and uh, loads of stories from the past, in a short moment suddenly I see that they've never left a trace. I'm not marked in any way, I'm not, I'm not a victim in any way, there's self-release in each short moment. And this is the freedom that is available in each perception. Freedom in immediacy of perception and complete perceptual openness in all experiences. And that's what the Balance View training really seal open for all of us. Something that we can do and recognize in our own experience, our own greatness, our own power to be of benefit without getting lost anymore in descriptions and do it together with other people. See that we are all alike, we are all in the same boat.